welcome to our Wednesday of Holy Week. Uh, yesterday on Tuesday we made our heart biscuits. Um, I ended up with quite a lot of heart biscuits left, so I took some out to my neighbours. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed them or that you shared them, whatever you did. Um, let us know how you got on. Today, Wednesday, we are thinking about Judas. Um, and so for today's recipe, we only need three ingredients. Um, we've got some Cheerios or um, multi green cups, uh, a bowl of honey, and a bowl of peanut butter. Um, and that's all we need, and a baking uh, tin, a loaf tin, lined with some foil. We're gonna be using the fridge today, not the oven. The only thing we'll need the oven for is the hob as we melt some of our ingredients. Um, but Wednesday of Holy Week is the day that we remember Judas. Um, Judas was one of Jesus' disciples, that's his 12 closest friends. But Judas was the one who agreed to betray Jesus for the price of 30 pieces of silver. Now, I don't know how to make silver, and um, that's a different subject altogether, but we're going to be using these um, hoops as to remind us of money. Um, the kind of circular shape, sticking all together, that's, that's the thing that we're going with this morning. Um, now, Judas was, uh, we find out from the Bible, a passionate man um, who had a strong belief in freedom and strong ideas about um, what it would look like and how it would come about. And Jesus doesn't fit in with what these ideas look like, so he wasn't really sure um, about Jesus. Now, there's nothing wrong with having strong ideas and there's um, nothing wrong with being passionate about things. But as with Jesus, as with Judas, we need to make sure that we keep on listening to God um, to hear his solutions and his timings and to see his kingdom in his way. Part of the problem with Judas was that he got frustrated that the way that he was expecting things to happen didn't come about um, either in the way or in the time that he was hoping for. And um, that led to his betrayal of Jesus further down the line. So we're going to think about that as we go through. But the first thing we need to do this morning is to get a small little saucepan. I'm going to put my honey, which is uh, 160 grams of work honey, into the saucepan. This is quite a basic honey, so if it's nice and runny, you can use any sort of honey. If you have bees, you can use nice uh, local honey. This is a cheap Tesco one, which will do the trick as well. Um, if you have babies under one in your house, then do not give them these because babies under one cannot eat honey. So there's that one. Um, and the other ingredient for now is 180 grams of peanut butter. Now, if you are allergic to nuts or you live in a house with somebody who is allergic, then uh, maybe best to not make this recipe, as I'm not sure what alternative we could use for peanut butter. Um, but if not, it doesn't matter what sort of peanut butter you use, it can be smooth or crunchy. You can technically use any nut butter if you're not a fan of peanuts. Um, you could use cashew or almond or whatever sort of nut butter you want, but we're going for the sweet and nutty taste in here, so we can use these spoons to push themselves in. Okay, so I've already warmed my hot up, which you may not have done. You need to wait a few minutes for it to warm up. So we'll put that on there. Yeah. Okay, grab a um, so all we're doing to start off with is melting the peanut butter in a pan over a medium heat until it's melted um, and all blended together. Sure you keep stirring it constantly so it doesn't catch or burn on the bottom and while we're stirring it we can think about um, or remind us to think about how we can listen to God's way and God's timings as we wait patiently for the honey and peanut butter to melt. So my peanut butter is quite loose, that really didn't take very long for it to uh, melt and blend together. And I've now got this lovely gooey peanut butter and honey combination. Um, if you're using a thicker peanut butter or a crunchy one, it might take a little bit longer, but it should only take a few minutes um, on a nice low heat because the honey will warm up nice and quickly. 
Um, so that's very simple. The next thing I'm going to do is very easily pour um, carefully because it will be a little bit warm the um, peanut butter and honey in with the cereal clusters. And then very simply, we're just going to stir it all together so the peanut butter is coating all of the pieces of cereal. So we get all the peanut butter out so you've got enough of the liquidy bits. Make sure that the mixture is coating all of your bits of cereal because that is what's going to be what sticks it together when you put it in the fridge. Um, if it's not coating any of the pieces, then they're just going to fall off, which you don't want. So it doesn't take very long again, and that mixture is a lovely amount to make sure that all of your bits of cereal are nice and coated. So now all we need to do is pour the mixture into my tin, which is here ready. Cereal now sticking to the spoon, so we'll have to make sure we scrape them off to get the most out that we can on the counter. Okay, so we've used your spoon to uh, make sure it's all pressed down into the edges and the corners, um, so that it's going to be even all the way around. Any last ones that stuck to the spoon, they're going everywhere, aren't they? And there we have it. So I'm just going to put that into the fridge for an hour. Um, it's made in cereal, so it's quite a light, nice, um, light mixture. It doesn't weigh very much. That's going to go in the fridge, set for an hour. Um, and in that hour, we can think about um, the other side of Judas was that the money that he was offered, this 30 pieces of silver, which for him was a lot of money um, in those days, tempted him to do something that he later wished that he hadn't. So Judas betrayed Jesus um, to the religious leaders, and that led to the events of Good Friday, which we'll find out about later in the week. But after that, he regretted what he'd done, um, and it didn't end very well for him. He even tried to give the money back, um, but the, uh, the religious leaders wouldn't take it, and that made the situation even worse. Um, so while this is chilling in the fridge, maybe we can have a think about why saying sorry can feel like such a hard thing to do. Now for Judas, he made a massive um, problem which has very severe consequences. Um, but for us, we may not have made, uh, we may have done things wrong that, that weren't quite as serious. But it's still very important to say sorry for those things. And um, so whilst it's chilling in the fridge, let's have a think um, about why saying sorry can feel like a, a hard thing to do um, and what we can do to help with that. So I'll see you in an hour. Okay, welcome back. So we've had an hour. My cake has been in the fridge for an hour and it's now ready to turn out. It's all nice and set together. So I'm going to turn it onto a cutting board this is why the foil is in, because we can use the foil to pull the bar out of the baking tin. Let me peel the foil off. There we are. And there we have a nice big, move that right out of the way, nice big loaf of Cheerios. So you can cut this into bars or into um, chunks, I'm going to cut it into slices, I think, because um, I think it's going to be easy to cut up, and then we'll enjoy that. Um, if you're keeping it for a few days, you probably want to keep it in the fridge, particularly if it's warm, otherwise that honey might just start melting a bit and it won't stick together very well. Um, but enjoy your cake, and we will see you again tomorrow.